People Know Notion is pretty much the productivity and organization tool. YouTubers and productivity nerds alike have been raving about Notion, but I wanna show you how I use Notion as my all-in-one go-to app for studying during medical school, particularly in my final clinical years. I'll show you how I use Notion to take notes, to study for final exams, to track my progress, and make sure I'm focusing exactly on what I should be studying for in the lead up to exams. Let's take a look at what I mean. In university or college, they often say that everyone has a different style of studying or a different approach to their learning, and for me, it probably took me a little bit of time to figure out exactly what that was, but Notion completely changed the game for me because I found I was spending less time on organization and structure and more time on actually revising the content that I needed to know for the exams and getting that information into my brain. It served as both a note-taking app for during tutorials and lectures, as well as a spaced repetition tool and active recall tool for revising the content, particularly when it came to studying for exams. Let's start by taking a look at how it's all set out and going through each component in Notion. You can also download a template of this exact tool in the link in the description below. So pretty much all of my medical school content is stored in this one Notion database. So you can see down the left hand side here, there's a list of different medical conditions. All of this is stored in what's called a database in Notion or a database table, which is actually a really useful tool because you can see how everything's organized in a table-like format, but each of these individual links opens up to a new page. And if you're familiar with Notion, you're familiar with how a database works but I think it's you know a really good structural tool and it serves as the backbone for how everything's kind of structured. But to understand how this tool is kind of laid out, it's also important to understand the structure of my medical degree. So there were two years of preclinical years and I primarily used this tool for studying in my final two clinical years of medical school. So when I was on the hospital, on the wards, focusing on particular medical conditions, this was the tool that I used to study for each of those conditions. And we rotated through different areas of medicine like general practice, surgery, general medicine, obstetrics and gynecology, anesthetics, ICU, and really a whole bunch of the core medical specialties. And whilst on these rotations, we would have tutorials and lectures throughout the week that were focused on conditions associated with that particular rotation. And in terms of defining the scope of our curriculum, our medical school provided us with a list of a few hundred of the most common medical conditions that we were expected to know for our exams. And so for all of those reasons, having a document for each of those core conditions made sense for me. And each condition on that list was also categorized into a different specialty or rotation from medical school. So you can see here, uh, ICU anesthetics, surgery, pediatrics. And this also allowed me to filter through each condition based on the specialty that it was related to. If I felt like I needed to study on a particular specialty that week for a rotation, or if I needed to work on a particular specialty for exams that I felt like I needed to study a little bit more on, I could filter through those conditions and focus on just the ones related to that particular specialty. I also had a couple date columns which showed when that topic was last revised, when it's next due, and kind of my confidence level with that particular topic. And this was kind of the Anki style spaced repetition aspect of the database, which I'll touch on a little bit more in a bit. Now let's take a look at one of these pages. So here's where I take notes on a particular condition and the beauty of Notion really stands out here for a few reasons. So firstly, having all of your notes accessible like this makes it so easy to look back on them and add notes on the fly. Particularly if you're in the hospital on ward rounds, you can quickly whip out your phone, brush up on a few conditions um, and just jot a few points down that you've learned about. Um, it also allows you to seamlessly add photos as well. So if you're in the middle of a tutorial and a lecture, you can take a screenshot of the lecture slide, drag and drop it straight onto your notes, which is really handy. And I love that Notion allows you to be really organized and structured with your notes, but probably the biggest thing for me with Notion is this little thing here. This little toggle arrow changes everything. It it absolutely is active recall and it allowed me to use my note taking app as my space repetition active recall app, kind of replacing a lot of the need for Anki. And I know Anki is a really popular tool used by medical students. And I loved it particularly for anatomy, but I found that when I was revising content like this, that was very much, you know, condition focused, uh, driven by content that we'd learned in tutorials and lectures, as well as things that I just added on the fly, it was super helpful in terms of revising that content and learning it well and committing it to memory. So the beauty of it really is that you can hide a piece of content or knowledge behind this little toggle thing, forcing you to think about and actively recall that piece of information when you're going back and revising your notes. So it means you're not just 
blatantly reading through the notes, you're actually like thinking about what is the answer to this particular piece of information. But for me, this particular tool saves so much time because I'm making these little toggles as I'm note taking during a lecture or during a tutorial or when I'm on ward rounds and I don't have to go back later and remake cue cards or Anki cards. I'm just doing it all at once and it saves so much time. And so these condition pages are all set out the same way as well. And if I wanna create a new topic, I have a template here. Um, and most med students will be familiar with this kind of structure when outlining a new condition. You go through the pathophysiology, some of the causes, um, risk factors, that sort of thing. And then you go into the clinical aspects so what kind of things you'd expect to find on clinical examination, um, what investigations you might order, what are your differential diagnoses, all of that sort of thing. And also thinking a bit about like prognosis and complications that, and that sort of thing later on. So that was my approach to exploring each of these individual conditions. And so this structure is already ready to go when I'm going through that topic. I can just kind of fill in the gaps as I go. So I can just create a new page, create the title for that particular page, and then I can start filling in the different you know elements as the tutorial is going or as the lecture is going or you know as I'm finding things out in my own study time. All right, so now let's take a look at how I use Notion to revise content and then particularly revise for exams. We've looked at the active recall toggle component of many of my notes, but let's see how I use Notion to actually track my exam study and make sure that I'm correctly revising for different conditions, spacing them out in you know that Anki style space repetition manner, but also ensuring that I'm revising the right content at the right time. And I think that's so much about exam study and preparation is knowing what to study when, and this tool really allows you to do that. And also what I love about this setup is you don't have to think about what to study, it just tells you what to do. So when it comes to exam time, it can be quite overwhelming knowing what to study when and what particular things to focus on. I think this thing just shows you. It just shows you exactly what you need to do on that on that day. You might log into Notion on a particular day and you'll have like 10 conditions allocated to you because a week ago, those are the conditions that you said, all right, in a week's time, they, this is what I need to focus on or this is something that I need to be studying a few times a week to be able to really get down and, and nail the knowledge on. All right, so enough rambling. This is how it works. So you revise a topic, you put in today's date and kind of how you felt about it. And based on that, I'll then go and set a time for when I'll next revise that topic. So it can be tomorrow, in a few days, in a week. And then I'll also go ahead and set a notification up. So that way it pings on my phone and reminds me, you know, when I need to have another crack at that particular topic. And that's good, not just for exam time when you're kind of sitting at your desk all the time, and but it kind of is like a bit of forced revision when you wake up or, you know, you're on rounds during the day and you get a few pings on your phone saying, all right, this is what I need to go and revise later when I get home. A few of those little cognitive reminders. And when it comes closer to exam time, it also helps me prioritize what I need to know and what I need to focus on. So is this a topic that I feel pretty confident in and can I I just you know leave it alone and forget about it while I focus on another topic that I'm kind of struggling with a bit more that maybe I'll revise every day or every other day until I get to the point where I feel you know I'm I'm pretty solid with this topic so now let's look at adding a new condition to the database so if we pop on over here to the top right and just click the new button so create a new document for us and here we can see the common conditions template and this is exactly what we were going through before this is the the structure and layout that I use for most conditions and you know we'll set up a topic like maybe pneumonia. You know, we can look at the different risk groups, risk factors. So pathogenesis, you might think about the different bugs that cause pneumonia. Uh, presentation, so you know, they could be short of breath. They might have increased work of breathing. They might be febrile. They might have a productive cough. Then investigation, so if someone would come into emergency department with uh, you know, productive cough, they're feverish, so you can say blood tests, imaging, and then management, surgical management, probably not really appropriate here. So pharmaceutical management, you might think of different antibiotics. So that's a little bit about how you might kind of structure one of these documents, one of these pages, and feel free to download the template in the link below, but also to mix it around and create your own little thing that works for you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and feel free to like and subscribe as well if you found this video helpful. But again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.